lost. So people in these areas, there's other versions of the story, but people in these areas, they, find, they look, they, they see her by the river um, side, by the banks. They hear her, and there's just all kinds of stories on the internet about her. Um, well, what's, what is interesting about Lorona, I just love the story, um, and relate to it so much about the polluting of a river and what that, you know, what that would do to its flow and what that does to the life in that river. Similar to what we do to ourselves when we work all the time, when we don't play, when we don't deepen our relationships by spending time with our children, our grandchildren, our friends, our inner circle, when we don't meet people where they are. There's just so many versions of that. And again, I'll repeat, play, the flow of play leads to creativity. Chaos and messiness and being all over the place, you know, if I were to do another one of those silly dances that I do, um, or make faces and be messy or, you know, get in the mud, which I love to do. I love to stomp in the mud, get out there with my boots, you know, forget this. Ew, I'm going to walk around this. Nope, just stomp right through it. That's that kind of play, metaphorically, if not realistically, leads to creativity. It's the only way. We have to be messy. We have to step into the chaos. Our dreams call us to do that. We're called into the darkness. We're called into the unconscious and the collective, where there's a lot of scary beings. So to end, just uh, since we don't have, I don't know how much time we have left. Um, I'd like to read a poem to kind of tie the story and what I just said about Lorona together for you. And we can play some more with the story tomorrow if you're coming to the play shop. Um, but if not, I would love for you to check her out. In Definitely on the internet, you can get to her stories and in the library. Um, and uh, in Women Who Run With the Wolves, there's a version. Too. There's a couple versions. This poem is called is a Rumi poem, who I love also, Rumi. And it's called Bird Wings. Your grief for what you've lost lifts a mirror up to where you're bravely working, expecting the worst. You look, and instead, here's the joyful face you've been wanting to see. Your hands open and close, and open and close. If it were always a fist or always stretched open, you would be paralyzed. Your deepest presence is in every small contracting and expanding. The two as beautifully balanced and coordinated as bird wings. So imagine yourself flying. And imagine yourself um, in those moments in your life when you've had those many deaths, or deaths of loved ones, or deep grief. And then you come out on the other side after entering into that grief in a deep way. And you're transformed. About two and a half years ago, my mom died, and I was privileged to be with her when she died and heard her, her dreams before she died. She, I, she told me her dreams, and I was the, the one she chose. Um, dreams of being levitated by the angels. Dreams of going on tri a trip. And I knew what trip she was going on. She was visiting with loved ones on the other side. 
And because of that experience, I know today why I'm standing here is because of those kind of moments. Really led me to talk to you today about ways you can playfully enhance your life. Um, <clears throat> If you look around in um, different area in our area here, you'll find um, different scenes like this, very playful. Here's a bike rack. You know, not your standard bike rack. But if you're not playfully aware and you're not in a playful attitude, what happens? You miss it, don't you? You just go on your merry way and uh, your tunnel vision. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> harbor rules. You can see why I might have uh, saw, <laughs> saw this sign. I really noticed this. No fishing, no swimming, no skating, no biking, no animals, no nothing. That, isn't that what our society tells us? No, 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 no. Our kids, you know, kids certainly learn no right away. And it just keeps going. How about yes? Yes. Yes to life. And sometimes it's OK to go against those rules. Often it is. It won't kill you. Is it foolish to be so exposed? What do you think? Here you're all sitting in your chairs. What's the number one fear in America? Speaking in front of a group, right? <laughs> um, it's certainly doing, you know, the things that I do. Uh, so there's a lot of different points where you could you could appear foolish. So what? It, it, it'll enhance your life. Move into that just a wee bit. You know what? I really encourage you. Plus, the fool, there's many sides to the fool. I even had thought about maybe talking some more about the fool rather than the child, because so, the fool is so interesting. But one part of the fool is that he is the... He's the wisdom of the king, right? So play opens doors. It really does. And na nature play and being outside is so important. This is a, uh, an image of a child's hand from one of our ancient caves. Shiva. Okay, I'm trying to get to the slide I want. Here's a child, divine, the divine child dancing on a lotus. Um, okay, so the question is really tonight for you to take home and to bring to your dreams because you know bringing intention into your dreams is so important. So, what does your child want? And it'll take a while for you to get that answer and to incorporate it. It's not like, oh, I get the answer and that's it. But it's, it's well worth your time. It is the key to individuation. I'm sure many of you have seen this quote or heard it. Matthew, verily I say unto you, ex except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. And, it, you know, does it take a lifetime to achieve? Yes. Maybe even beyond a lifetime. So, you know, I, it, one of the things that I have struggled with a bit in my professional life is, and I, I've come to a resolution actually, uh, about, I, I've come to resolution about what 
the heck I do? What do I do? I am a play consultant and an advocate for play, and I'm a Jungian therapist. But when I talk about my work, I say I'm a play advocate, and I believe that dreams are play. And they really are on the top of the list. For one thing, dreams bring us so much humor, puns, playful metaphor. It's just incredible, the richness of our dreams. I can't imagine going through a day without not paying attention to my imagination, my dreams, my daydreams. I really think that dreams are, we're living a dream right now. And many other people do too. So we're being called to act in our dreams. We're not just being called to write them down. Hopefully you do that. We are being called to do something with what we have, what we're given. They're, it's not a stagnant thing, okay? So in this, in this way, I'd like you to consider when you have dreams that you know, you're making, you're making a decision to pay attention to your dreams, and then from your dreams, there's some decisions to be made in your life. That's, what, that's why you're getting the dreams. What, is, what, do you, what it, intention did you go to sleep with? What do you ask? You know, what would you like to move into? It may not be what you get. <laughs> Probably won't be, matter of fact. Um, because we think we know. You know, that's the other thing that play is about. We think we know it all. You came here tonight and you probably thought, well, I know what it's all going to be like, and I know where I'm going to sit or how I'm going to sit, and I know that, you know, I, this is how I usually go to lectures, and I'm going to write notes, I'm not going to write notes, I'm going to fall asleep or whatever. You got it all figured out. <laughs> Shirley's writing notes. <laughs> and, you know, we all do that. We're humans. We all do that. But... There is so much more if you take that I know and you put it aside. And that's play helps us go into the unexpected, like crows who take that in, those wonderful crows. So, and then you can act on your own behalf, not because somebody supposed you, your parents told you, that you should do it this way or that way, or your friends. Like my husband saying, how can you talk about death and play? You're going to scare them. If I had listened to him, I wouldn't be, you know, talking the way I'm talking, because I don't, I have to do it my own way, on my own behalf. Um, if I had listened to my parents, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. I would be, um, I'd probably be a nun. That's probably what I'd be. <laughs> in a Roman Catholic something or other, because they're very conservative Catholic. Um, and in fact, when I, ha I have had, I have friends who are women ministers, and my mom was horrified. How can you go with that person? You know, so these kind of messages, how can you do that? Okay. So playful steps. My granddaughter, my 16-month-old granddaughter, said it today. She was she's learning words, and she said, "Be wild." And I said, "That's what I'm going to talk about tonight. How exciting! <laughs> Be wild. Begin. Take one way that you played as a child, or maybe the one that you were given from somebody else." and try it out, either in a big way or a small way, an in-between way. Um, Jung, you know, he talked about going back to your story, going back to how you played as a child. He certainly did. He built his tower. He loved to play in the dirt with water and build. And, and as he got older, that really manifested in a very big way. Um, so, you know, and, it, and also Jung, I mean, he was incredible because, of course, at a very young age, he had these enor this enormous dream that I couldn't imagine 
that that many people have had that kind of experience. So he's a remark. He's certainly a remarkable, remarkable man of our times, and and he's also very. He, he was very, very playful, um, in, especially in his elder years and in, in his writing and in the way he talked about dreams and active imagination. Um, and those people that have followed him, including myself. Um, craft your playful life. What do you want it to be like? Like, I'm doing a tw 2011 calendar. What am I going to do? Well, part of that is play. Don't let time just slip by and not find your own ways to play. I write. I dance. I work with people with their dreams. I sand play. I, that's, you know, I hike. I'm outside with people. Uh, I play with my grandkids. These are all my ways. You have you. Everybody here has different ways to play, and we'll play, you know we'll, we'll be playing with that tomorrow. Um, and lay out nourishment for your playful life and for your child. Literally, you can give an offering to your child. Literally, you can give playful offerings to your ancestors and ask them to help you. And they will. And it'll come in your dreams. There's just there's just so many ways in. Make sure. And that's it. So <clears throat> I hope that, um, to end, I hope that um, you'll all go your merry way playfully and find your own unique path in play and offer that to somebody else in your life. You know, offer yourself as a play companion to somebody else, whether that's a partner or your children, grandchildren, or a friend, um, because there's just so much. And also, um, in the natural world, a lot of us, like myself, relate to animals. So animals and rocks and mountains. And, you know, so find time for yourself in those environments. It's so important in, when you look at play to find still points, to find moments to stop. Play is not just about energetic, energetics. It's about both. It's about stopping and then renewing. Because in the stopping is where we really find ourselves, in those still points. And that can just mean take a deep breath. So everybody take a deep breath with me. And thank you very much. And I'll open to questions as we end tonight.